Good morning and a very warm welcome to all this morning. Please do be seated for a moment. Just a couple of things before we begin our worship. Next Sunday at 11 o'clock at St. Mary's we have a benefice communion and it would be lovely to see as many people as possible at St. Mary's next Sunday morning at 11 o'clock for our benefice communion. So do make, please make a note of that. I look forward to seeing you down at St. Mary's next Sunday morning. Following this morning's service, there will be an opportunity, an opportunity to receive prayer for healing in the North Isle Chapel. You're welcome to come for prayer for yourself or for someone you know. That's this morning after the service, an opportunity to receive prayer for healing in the North Isle Chapel. And I do believe that's all the notices I have, which makes a pleasant change. So let's just be quiet together now for a moment before we begin our worship. Just gather ourselves, prepare ourselves for our worship this morning. And from our service sheet, we declare together why we have gathered. We have gathered together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit and strengthened by sharing God's gifts, we may give ourselves to the service of God and all people. So we stand now for our opening hymn number 385, Be Thou My Guardian and My Guide, and Hear Me When I Call. Number 385, please stand. Jesus said, before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. 
as brothers and sisters in God's family, we confess together, asking our Father's forgiveness. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive you your sins, open your eyes to God's truth, strengthen you to do God's will, and give you the joy of his kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So, please stand. silence, we collect our prayers. Creator God, you made us all in your image. May we discern you in all that we see and serve you in all that we do through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So please be seated for our first reading.
The reading is from Colossians 2, verses 6 to 19. Paul desires that the Christians in Colossae will continue to be rooted in Christ and grow in faith, not distracted by rules and practices which are not required once they have faith in Christ. As you, therefore, have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision, by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or of observing festivals, new moons or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions, puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we stand for our gradual hymn, number 416, Father, hear the prayer we offer. Please stand.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place. And after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. Jesus said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a fr friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks, receives. And everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, you'll give him a, steak, a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Father, may we hear your word, and through that word, we may be changed ever more to your glory. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please do be seated. Sarah had been searching for what seemed like a very long time. Then, at last, what she, had been, what she had long been looking for was before her. A vacancy for an E2L tutor at Nanjing University, China. Six months later, Sarah had had all her vaccinations. Her visa application had been approved. Everything that she, showed, that she thought she needed was even now being shipped to her university flat in Nanjing. Her suitcase was waiting next to the front door, together with her flight bag. Her one-way ticket to Beijing airport was safely in a handbag, next to her passport. Last night, Sarah had said her final farewells to her closest friends. As an only child, Sarah's mum and dad had died within a year of each other, unbelievably already 11 years ago. Sarah looked round the house she had rented for the last six years. What was once her home now looked very sad and empty. All that remained was to wait for the taxi. Many, far too many, 
Weary hours later, a tired but excited Sarah stands before the front door of her new home in Nanjing. She turns the key in the lock, and for some strange, unknown reason, she knocks before stepping over the threshold. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. I knocked, mused Sarah, and the door opened. My new life is here. I can sit back, relax, and enjoy what I've long wanted, dreamt about, and hoped for. That's it. The door to new life has opened. All done and dusted. Job done. But it's not. The journey has only just begun. There are a few familiar things, but there are lots and lots of strange and unfamiliar things. I can now speak Chinese reasonably well, but there's so much to learn. The new idioms, the images and associations that words and phrases carry, the subtle meanings that words hold, the different cultural expectations, what to wear, how to greet people, what is expected of me, how am I expected to behave in a huge variety of different situations, as yet all unknown to me. So much new to discover and to embrace. It will take my lifetime. There are so many big changes ahead and so many small changes ahead. And it's the small changes that are the most difficult. The small changes will be especially difficult because I come from a different world and I carry deep within me that different world. I suspect there will be times when I will feel drawn back to my old life. When I, what I want, when I, when I want, what used to be the old familiar ways, the ingrained behavioral responses, the certainty of the known. As for Sarah, so for me. I searched for a long time, and eventually, with the encouragement of friends, I knocked on the door, and it was opened, inviting me to step into a new life. I stepped into that new life, thinking at first that was it, job done, all done and dusted. Then I realized that the journey had only just begun. That I had so, that I had and have so much more to discover, to try to understand, and so much to unlearn. I needed to learn and I'm still learning a new language, discovering the riches, the depths, the subtleties of that new language. I needed to know how to behave in this new world, and I'm still learning. I needed to know what is expected of me in this new world, and that is still being revealed. Like Sarah, I feel at times drawn back to my old life, the easy, the familiar, the deeply ingrained ways of thinking, of behaving, of being. That old life still has a pu pull on my new life. And I must admit that there are times when I slip back into the old familiar ways. As with Sarah, as with me, so with many here and elsewhere today, and also with many in the days ahead, we have, and others will, knock on the door, and the door will be opened. For those who have, like me, and many of us, for those who have stepped through the door, a new life, a new journey begins. Not necessarily or, or easily, an easy journey, so much to learn and to unlearn, 
so many things within us to discover and to change, so much potential to realize. Knock and the door will be opened for you and you will be invited to step over the threshold into a new life in a new world. That world is the world that Jesus taught us to pray for. Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Knock and the door will be opened for you. Our task is to encourage those who have not yet knocked on the door to knock. And when that door is then opened, to step over the threshold into that new place with the promise that we and many others will be with them on their journey. For those who have and those who will, as Sarah knew when she mused at the start of her new life, there is so much new to discover, to embrace in God's kingdom. It will take our lifetimes. So let's stand to affirm our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in His Son, Jesus Christ? who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So we sit or kneel for a time of prayer. Jesus said, when you pray, say, Our Father. We thank you, God, that we belong to the worldwide family of Christians, that through prayer we can bring to you, our Father, our needs and the needs of the whole world. Lord, in your mercy, At this time, as we recover from the high temperatures, we pray for all in this country and in Europe who have lost their homes and their possessions in the fires. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the members of our fire services as they face danger and exhaustion in bringing the fires under control. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are now about to choose a new prime minister. 
We pray for whoever is chosen and the new government as they face the issues of rising prices, growing poverty, and ways of tackling the issues of climate change. Lord, in your mercy, and we pray for the churches in our benefice here at Formark, Newton Solney and Repton as they face a challenging future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we say together the prayer on page six. Heavenly Father, you have promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, that when we meet in his name and pray according to his mind, you will be among us and hear our prayer. In your love and mercy, fulfill our desires and give us your greatest gift, which is to know you, the only true God and your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand for the peace. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith. We are heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We offer another a sign of peace. And so to take us into our time of communion prayer, we remain standing to sing hymn number 428, Father, sorry, forgive our sins as we forgive.
generous God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, at your table we present this money, symbol of the work you have given us to do. Use it, use us, in the service of your world, to the glory of your name. With this bread that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. With this wine that we bring, we shall remember Jesus. Bread for his body, wine for his blood. Gifts from God to his table we bring. We shall remember Jesus. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and told us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and singing. sit or kneel to continue in prayer. <clears throat> Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendor and light. Yet, in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation, loving us to the end. He gave himself to death for us, dying for his own. He set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. On the night he gave up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. 
we celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high and we long for his coming in glory. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption. Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Look with favour on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth. Heal the sick. Let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with all your saints at the table in your kingdom where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. As our Saviour has commanded us and taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As this bread is broken, as Christ was broken and resurrected, We draw near with faith to receive all that God offers us through the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us share together in remembrance that Christ died and lives for us today and be fed by his spiritual gifts freely offered to us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. body 
broken fear. The body of Christ broken fear. The body of Christ broken.
join together in our prayer after communion. You have opened to us the scriptures, O Christ, and you have made yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Abide with us, we pray, that blessed by your royal presence, we may walk with you all the days of our life, and at its end, behold you in the glory of the eternal Trinity, one God forever and ever. Amen. So we come now to our sending hymn number 496. We stand to sing, Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us. Please stand. light of Christ pierce the darkness of this world. May the love of Christ lift your spirits and gladden each day. May the peace of Christ fill your hearts and minds. May Christ our Saviour walk by your side today and all your days. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. We go in peace to love and to serve the Lord in the name of Christ.